Alrighty guys, I'm gonna keep it real with you. I was curious about Call of Duty Vanguard, so I decided to uh, watch the uh, Midway mission, because I heard about the Midway mission in Call of Duty Vanguard, and I was like, huh, let's, uh, that could be interesting. Let's see, let's see how they did the Battle of Midway, and after I got about halfway through, I was like, nah, this is content. I'm gonna have to do a historical breakdown on this, because... Uh... Anyway, let's uh, <laughs> let's start this bad boy. As we all know, uh, Call of Duty Vanguard has been copping some flack for its, uh, you know, M1 Garand with drum mag and red dot sight, and uh, oh fuck, it's disgusting. Um, but look, you know what? I'm just gonna roll the clip. Let's let's dissect this mess. Wade had talked himself out of worse situations. If you heard him talk about Midway. You could tell he was no stranger to hyperbole. Every time Wade told the story, it was a little different. Okay, so it looks like a Yorktown class carrier, I think. They got that right. I mean, it looks right. Um, for at least from the bow. Uh, I mean, the anchor placement's good. The guns, I mean, actually, I think that is actually an error. Hold up. Looking at it. Yep, it is. Okay, so two things you would notice. This is, I think, supposed to be a early war Yorktown class carrier. Because obviously it's the Battle of Midway, naturally. The deck shape looks about right, but as you can see, Enterprise, Yorktown, or Hornet, whoever it's supposed to be, has got the late war refit 20mm Aurelicon cannons on the side here. They also have this platform here, which wasn't here yet. But uh, overall, the actual model itself looks pretty good, so... I mean, it's fair enough they made that mistake. That's a small mistake, but... Yeah. He added a wing of Zeros, or another aircraft carrier to Points here, TBD Devastators and SBD Dauntlesses. So there's no Hellcats or Avengers on the ship. So that's a plus. Also, the island... Looks about right. There's no 5 inches here, so... This looks about right. I can't see the tripod stand that was famous on Enterprise here, but that's okay. Allie. But I read the reports about what happened that day. If Wade was exaggerated, it was only by a little. Okay, so this little bit back here. Sorry I'm pausing it so much, but um, as uh, Screwface John, the uh, hip-hop reactor, would say, we're, we're breaking it down, breaking it down. Okay, yeah, actually, that's good. Okay, so you can see that the Yorktown class here has the tripod up here, so that's most likely Enterprise. And you can see... Yeah, okay, that's that's fair enough. This is actually a recreation of a very famous photo of the Battle of Midway. Uh, the TBD Devastators lined up on the deck. I'll put the... In post, I'll put the, the real picture up here. But yeah, okay. Looking good so far. Not too bad. If Wade was exaggerated, it was only by a little. So at this stage I was okay, I was like, hey, this looks pretty good. Sounds right. Remember, our primary objective is destroying the two Japanese carriers. VS and VB squadrons will each take one. Fighting Squadron 6 will provide cover. Okay. They knew there was four. They knew there was four carriers. The so mistake number one. If the weather holds, we'll be in and out before they know what hit them. This wind will give us the Pacific. Now go out there and get the carriers. As if this operation wasn't hard enough? Now the entire war's on the line? Relax, Hernandez. I was born for this. <laughs> Not too sure I was. Vamos, Jackson. Ah, yes. Okay, so, stop. Alright, the fuck is this uniform? Can someone explain this to me? The fuck is this uniform? Alright, I... What? Okay, so... I don't know how old the US military is, like, in its modern form, at least, by this stage. But I can guarantee you there ain't no such thing as an expert swordsman badge. 
a combat infantry swordsman badge, to be specific. He also has jump wings on a weird yellow device. Not sure what that campaign ribbon is. It's probably something. Something that looks like an 8th Air Force logo, but it's got a 6 around it, which I'm assuming is supposed to be a reference to Fighting 6, so the Wildcat Squadron from Enterprise. Um, and... I'm sorry, that... That there, that torpedo, that, that TBD Devastator in the corner, that, that, that wing plan form does... Because that side plan form looks like an old-school TBD Devastator, so that, that's good. This is good, but what the fuck is that? I don't know. Um, but yeah, look, we have an army guy. He's in an army pinks and greens uniform with a sidearm on a US carrier. He's a sergeant, no less. And he's got a 8th Air Force shoulder badge with a 6 logo. That's a US Army Air Force logo. However, this US Army Air Force guy also has a combat infantry badge with a sword instead of a rifle and paratrooper jump wings. So... I guess, right. They finished repairs on the plane this morning. She's waiting for us on the flight deck. She has a name. You named the plane. Our plane? Oh, and you didn't now. say anything. You, you never know. asked. Hold up. Back, 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 back. I didn't notice that. Let me go back. You know what? The... Huh? The Army Air Forces. On a U.S. Navy carrier. Listen to this. Dear Mr. Army Man. Army? Fuck that. Bravo. Bravo, Call of Duty. Bravo. Never asked. Okay, now these are gorgeous. And I do like that detail there. Extra aircraft and spare airframes were stored in the roof of the hangar bay. As you can see there with extra wings and spare parts. The roof, the butterfly flaps on the SPD are featured prominently. Um, and if we look at the uh, TBD Devastator right here, the wings are folded accurately in the engine that was... Let me just wind it back here. If I'm doing it right. Yep, so look, yep, the engine is correct. Okay, so they got that bit correct. I think that's a generator... That right there on the left is a generator, I'm pretty sure. But bay two, bay one, um, the elevator down the end there, th that's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty good. You think the Intel boys got the fleet position right? They better. If we pull this off, they'll be writing about us in history books. Yeah, well, I'd rather not be history today, so... Spoiler alert, they didn't get the fleet position right. Um... The... they were... they basically stumbled on it by accident. The Marines who launched from Midway Island got the fleet position right, as they had up-to-date reports. But the Navy guys had to go looking around, because funny thing about ships is they move. Uh, they change positions, obviously. Uh, and Nagamo made a breaking turn out to the northeast, so they couldn't find it. Also, nice little detail here. They're changing the guns and the ammo on the uh, wing mounts for the F4F. And the F4F model is pretty good, I think. Looking at the... Yeah, okay, they're the correct model of F4F. Do us right, both cool. a favor and keep the crazy stunts to a minimum. Stunts? The paint Ouch job's looking good. <laughs> I don't know if they... I think they might have gotten rid of the meatball in the middle by this stage. I think so. This isn't the way Jackson show, amigo. This is war. All of us just want to win and go home. You worry about keeping the zeros off my tail, and I'll get us home. Hey, hold the elevator! Sorry about this. The um, the player is like really annoying. Sometimes it doesn't get rid of that. I got you, Jackson. Thank us up. Okay, so how many medals do you think we'll win if we pull this off, Jackson? After today, they're gonna have to name one after me, Miller. Just remember, we're a team up there, and stay in formation this time, or the sag will have both your stripes. Yeah, formations just slow me down. You see what I have to deal with? Not sure about the quad mounts on the 20 mils. I think they're accurate. They seem to be. Um, again, it might be a, a late war model of the Aurelican cannon, the four stack. Uh, his equipment is accurate uh, for the most part. Um, 45's good. 
Flight helmet is good. I do like the fact that they included the detail of the oxygen bottles. That's excellent. So they do have their oxygen. So that works. And then you got the sign there, Brubera, 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 beware of propellers on the flight deck. You've got the, you've got the shirts with the different crews. You've got the red hats and the red shirts for ordnance, and he's the red shirts are towing ordnance. So that. Look at that. Damn, it's and a you beautiful day to fly. Okay, now it's this is pretty good. Taylor's uniforms are good. It's time. Now those cruisers are accurate. Um, I think Pensacola or New Orleans class. I think this is just me going off memory. Uh, I'm more into the aviation side of the naval side of things. So, but these look correct. Like they look pretty good. I lay you awake. Ten bucks says I down more zeros than you, Jack. Come on, man! Don't encourage him. So, yep, yeah, more deck crew. Hand signals are correct. Uh, I'm not sure if they were in place to this degree at this stage, but I'm thinking but as far as modern LSO, like modern, rather, not LSO, that's landings. But deck crew for movement of the aircraft around the deck, that is correct. Purple shirts overseeing refueling and engine startup. Yep. Yeah, good. Sugar 17. Hear you loud and clear. Intercom's working fine. Okay, SPD cockpit. Let's have a look at what we've got here. The dive bombing site, which you can see at the top of the thing is correct. That's looking pretty good. I actually quite like the graphics. Um for this for this particular aircraft. I do like the sort of the rustic metallic sort of it feels a bit beaten up you know what i mean it, it looks a bit weathered and a bit uh, sort of more grungy if that makes sense but i'll be honest with you i i do think that the uh, cockpit's a bit wrong so the the guns are in the right spot so these are good uh the pitch that's in the right spot but it doesn't look like that those type of uh the um, horizon ball wouldn't look like that for a while. It's just a standard tracking ball. Um, dive angle indicator is correct. These should be reversed. This this should be these should be in different places. Um, that's correct. There should be an extra set of dials down here, but there aren't. Uh, can't see the throttle quadrant good, but um. Okay, fuel and engine controls and mixture controls. Pedal hub, that, that looks just about right. Stick is good. I mean, it's okay. It's perfectly serviceable. A few little details wrong. The diving site looks a bit off, but it's... It, the, I appreciate the fact that it's there and not some random hollow gun site like yeah, I was expecting. So. Hey, they're signaling Pretty for pre-flight check. Check the elevators in the back. Yep. All right, elevators are good. So pre-flight okay, checks Jackson, okay. Let's check the ailerons. Right wing's good. Great. Now the left aileron. Yep. Left wing's good. All right, do an engine run up. Make sure she doesn't blow out. Oh, that was a cool little detail there. Just uh. So I, I like that they've got the yellow deck lines. They weren't painted over yet from the original Yorktown class. They hadn't been removed yet. So that's, they'd be removed in the refits. I, what I was going back for was I do like the fact that they've got the little detail of the chocks being moved to the side of the flight deck. So yeah, we can see it now. This Yorktown class has the refit number of Aurelicon 20mm cannons. It wouldn't have that many at this stage, but that's okay. Things good. All right, do an engine run up. Make sure she doesn't blow out. She's burning. Sounds good. Ease off, Jackson. Sugar 17, this is Tower. You're clear to take off. Okay, let's get her in the air. Ready, Hernandez? As ready as I'll ever be strapped to you. All right, here we go. Full power. Well, 
one thing they've got wrong um at least i i'm not sure about the wave patterns here i'm not sure about it but it it, it feels like that the carrier is not going at full speed they should be going at full speed into the wind the wind the flags are moving to the aft of the ship which is good because it means it's into the wind all right which is good but i feel like they should be going a bit faster Release those brakes. You didn't go on the shooters go, my guy. Okay, now here's another thing. Oh, I see what they've done. It looks like they've got... If you can see here, these wires here at the front. I'm not sure if the Yorktown class had those originally, but I know that the Lexington class, so the Lexington and Saratoga, did have those. I'm not sure if the Yorktowns did, though. I don't think they did. The deck looks a bit weird. It's a bit more square. This guy doesn't need flaps for takeoff, obviously, because he's a Chad. Who needs takeoff flaps in a fully armed and loaded dive bomber to get extra lift? Who needs it? Por favor, no fancy tricks. You're no fun. This isn't supposed to be fun, Vendeo. Okay, so leaving aside the fact that it's a bit, I mean, given the circumstances and the racial politics of the United States at the time, that a Latino rear gunner would be in the US Navy dive bombing squadron, even as a navigator or a rear gunner, could they have not, like, made him drop uh, a, sp like, he says a Spanish word every, like, third sentence, like, hey guys, look at me, I'm, I'm Latino, can you see how diverse we're being? I mean, I, I mean, I don't like to bring that discussion up, but I just find it, I just find it a bit odd that they're going for, like, such a radical stereotype. He could have just been Hernandez, but they're going all in with it, so I just thought I'd put that little observation in there. So, you gonna tell me her name or what? Which one? The plane. This plane. You still hung up on that? Well, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> Fine. Keep your secrets. Sugar 10 to all Victor aircraft. Who's out of formation? Something's not right. Oh my god! Oh shit! Be better! God! Okay, so I know they're doing it for gameplay reasons, so I'm maybe I'm being a bit unfair. But the carrier launched task force of SBDs did not come under zero attack as the combat air patrol were attacking the devastated uh, torpedo. Damn bomber. zeros out of nowhere! They're on our torpedo bombers. Fighters aren't here yet. S-17, get on those bandits. Already on. Okay, so that's accurate. Okay, so the fighter escort were, had taken off after the bombers and the torpedo aircraft because of, you know, fuel concerns and navigational concerns. But can I just ask, what the actual fuck are TBD Devastator torpedo bombers doing at the operational altitude of SBDs. Why are they up here? What possible reason could Torpedo 8 or Torpedo 5 or Torpedo 6... What What the fuck is Lindsay doing? Alright? What is Lindsay doing? Why the hell is he up here? I, I don't get it. Look, the operational height for dropping a torpedo is like 10 feet. It's ridiculous. Why the hell are you a dive bomber out? <laughs> You're wasting fuel, guys. God. Keep them off the torpedo bombers. Alright, now I could split hairs about an SBD shooting down zeros. But I will say that once the SBD had lost its bomb load, it was actually very maneuverable, and the guns were actually quite effective against the lightly built Japanese aircraft. So, 
he shouldn't be doing these maneuvers with a 500 pound bomb and two 250s under his wings. He shouldn't be doing them, but uh, it, it's Call of Duty, so yes. They're on my sticks, I need some help. Might be punching out. Ah uh, yes, the 9G turn with full bomb load on board in an SPD. I can't be too hard on it though, because, you know, we see some crazy shit in Midway with uh, Dick Best and his shenanigans, so, yeah. Taking too much heat! On the fuck here! All right, I know that the clouds are for dramatic effect, but the weather on June 4th, 1942, over Midway Island was nothing like this. Also, he's not having to lead the Zeros. The Zeros were quite fast, actually, and so if they're going through a bomber formation, especially with all these rear guns firing at them, they're going to be doing slashing attacks or rolling attacks. Remember that the Japanese Naval Air Service at this time were the best fighter pilots in the world, actually, quite frankly. They had the most hours, the most training, and the most combat experience flying in China since... You know the early 1930s so these guys would be moving a lot faster and doing a lot more aerobatics um but he's just sort of in a lazy left hand turn and the spd is just pointing the gun straight at him and shooting at him but i guess leading the target is a complicated uh complicated mechanism for uh call of duty players so cut him some slack oh he cleared a jam look at that outstanding And he's shooting at friendlies, never mind. I love how the rear gunners have only just realized something, so it was like, oh, there's the Japanese, let's shoot at them now. Stop me, idiot. Awesome. You tell him, buddy. Flash. Nice job, S17. Pay attention, boys, and someday you'll be in Jackson's seat. God, I hope not. Watch that flag, boys. Coming up on the fleet. Okay, so you've got a solid cloud base, yet the Japanese are accurately hitting you with flak. Keep in mind that Japanese carriers and Japanese ships in general did not have radar-directed anti-aircraft guns. I don't even think they had any at this stage. And Japanese anti-aircraft guns were, quite frankly, awful. I recommend a video done by the naval historian Drakinefell on that, on that topic, but goddamn. Steady. I don't know why he hadn't closed the canopy until just now, considering that, you know, that's at least some form of protection from the shrapnel from all of the magically guided anti-aircraft guns. But the but the uh, dive bombing formation in Elements of Three in Column, okay, it's pretty good, all right. Hold on to your ass, Hernandez. Give it time, watch that trace of fire. Okay, now, positives. The flak's good. The butterfly flaps on the SPD, excellent. There's one problem, though. First Kyoto Bataille's escort force wasn't this big. I mean, the movie Midway makes the same mistake as well. But I can see, I think in this shot, down in the bottom of his cockpit, like right here... And this ship here, and I think we see it as we pull up over here. We've got all four Congo class battle cruisers up here. And I think you also see Nagato and Issei in here somewhere. Um just no. The big problem for the Japanese fleet was actually too little escorts and too little of their heavy ships with Kido Butai because they weren't fast enough, and because of course they were too busy protecting uh Yamato which was uh, the Japanese Navy's flagship at the time, with Admiral Yamamoto on board. So most of these ships wouldn't actually be here. They'd be protecting Yamato, 
or Yamato back with Admiral Yamamoto back there. Also, the aircraft carrier that he's diving on. Now, we're gonna, I'm gonna let it get a bit closer. I'm gonna let him get a bit closer. Why is there a gun on the precise bow of the carrier? Okay, so this is a better look at the carrier that we've got that we're looking at right now. Now, I'm having a little bit of trouble identifying what carrier this is supposed to be. Now, part of me thinks, part of me thinks that it's supposed to be sort of you but it doesn't look right to be sort of you and it's definitely not here to you and we would know if it was here to you because if it was here to you or akagi the island would be on the left side so i'm not sure what this carrier is modeled off i'm thinking it could be something like the junior which was uh, one of the ships that was sort of following up during the Guadalcanal campaign. Or it could be based on the Z Shokaku or Zuikaku. But... Almost there. He's aiming for the meatball though. That's something that uh, American pilots did do on Japanese ships with a flat deck. So props there. It's, it's pretty obvious though. Now, God damn it, now! Pull up, pull up! It also has three elevators. <laughs> Also, it's it's conducting launch operations. Why are its long range radio transmitters up? Why? It, it, those would be down if they're launching aircraft. Now this is the bit that gets. Me. So if you look at our eleven o'clock here, if we look at our eleven o'clock here, we can see that the ship on our left, right? We've got a carrier on our one o'clock. We've got a ship on our left. Good job, S seventeen. Now, again, that one's aerials are up too. Now, that that looks like it's trying to be Karga. But again, the island is a bit too far forward, so I reckon they've accidentally modelled it off Junio. Because you can see that the flight deck is elevated as though it was built on top of a cruiser hull or a battleship hull, right? And you can see that the ship up in the distance there has its island on the right as well. So... The fourth carrier that we attacked just there either has to be sort of you or it's designed on the wrong carrier. We really kicked the horn into that. Got full of zeros. We got to shoot our way out of this. Can't sit without those AA guns taking us out. Stay and that now, boy. Let's have a look. A bunch more zeros. That carrier's got that carrier back here. If I'm right, get a closer look. That carrier, that looks a bit close to me to be on the far, yep. So they've all got their... That bow's looking a bit better than the others. So this is probably more accurately representative of sort of you. Right here, because you can see the bow isn't sort of propped up like the other one over there was. This one looks fine. But again, the tower is on the right-hand side. So Hiryu and Akagi are not in this fleet, so they are not here. Also, the Japanese wish they had this many fast battleships. Holy shit. Zero. That's Nagato. It's Nagato on Issei. That you can tell by the pagoda is really, really high. Like, there's another one over there. Okay. Who is playing this mission really like shooting friendlies? It's crowded out here. You need help. Thanks for saving my ass. Damn it! You're not getting away. Incoming reinforcement. There's more of them. Another 
Wait, where are they all coming from? You need to thin out those zero traps. I've said it before, but I've been watching. I don't know if anyone else at home has been counting, but I've seen about seven or eight, like, Nagato class battleships here. Am I am I bugging or am, am I am I weirding or like man Japan wish they had this industrial capacity, dude. God damn. <laughs> Lead your target, you piece of shit. You Most suck. So that's an accurate detail. Torpedo 6 and Torpedo 8 were both wiped out to a man, so that's accurate. However, there were only a few survivors. That being said, they didn't all crash. Torpedo 6 managed to get away with one or two, I think. PT Squadron is not responding. Losing too many. That's not the devil! Doesn't count. His friend was dead already there, so that's fine. Homie's just flying through all this gunfire and all of this flak and all of these bullets from these zeros with his canopy open. All right. Cool. How are we supposed to do this? Again, I know it's a Call of Duty game, so I'm being unnecessarily harsh in this regard because they have they're just enemies to kill. But Japanese pilots at this stage of the war, this is the early war. As I was saying before, they're all veterans of China and they've been fighting through the early war like the Indian Ocean Raid and all that. All of these Zero pilots have got a thousand hours with about 200 of it combat time easy. And yet, them they're not hitting him at all and they're just flying right past him. Okay. Man here! We're losing too many! Only anyone left for a bombing run. We gotta go for it! Okay, so do the second dot. They still have ordnance on board. They're right on our tail. They're not climbing that fast. Oh shit! Why is it still shooting at us? Haul ass! Almost out of range. Did we lose them? And so they're flying through a thunderstorm. I don't see them. Probably going to do a side by side comparison from the movie Midway and the photos of the Battle of Midway. There was blue sky as far as the horizon could go, and yet we're flying through a thunderstorm. Like these are these are case three conditions, and we're flying. Uh, for example, case three is like blind landing conditions for aircraft carriers. This is like like no one is flying in this. No one is doing carrier ops in this. They, even today, they would be dubious about doing carrier ops in this weather. Watch it! Watch it! Oh, fuck! That's 
17, you took a beating there. You good? She's fine. Zero, dead ahead. Coming hot. Take him out. Excuse me, you're gonna, you're gonna forget about the fucking fire you have on your left wing. You're not gonna dive to try and get some airflow over the wing to put the fire out? You're not aborting your run immediately? What? <laughs> it doesn't have extinguishers in the wings like the 17. Like, it, you gotta... <sighs> As I said, the only accuracy in this regarding aircraft durability is the fact that the Zero really is this flammable and this... Ugh, God damn it. Zero, coming right at us! Shit, shit, shit. Keep getting out, build until we're back off the fleet! Okay, we've magically got bombs back, but Call of Duty game. S3 has one. Ah! S17 has one. Anyone else? Okay. S17 and S18, it's all on you. Form up behind us and take the shot. That'll be by the skin of our teeth, isn't it? It'll be close enough. All aircrafts, draw fire for S17. Altimeter Altimeter busted. I think you better hang on back there. I'm hit! Watch it out! Jackson, it's on you! Feeling steady! 200 more! A little farther! Almost! Now, Jackson! Okay, so that's an accurate model of Akagi. Um, so if we go back, it's an accurate model of Akagi, but the tower's on the wrong side. The tower should be over here. The conning tower, the island, excuse me, should be on this side. Because you see the model changes, and this... The island should be on the other side, but now this is see the funnel and the yeah the the island's on the wrong side, but this yeah. So if the island's on the wrong side and the and the slower sort of battleship hull, you can see it at the at the back of the ship here. So what they've got is they've got a weird hybrid between Akagi and Kaga right here. But no, I, I like that. It, it's wrong, but at least they were paying some attention. All right. And that's actually a very good representation of how the ship died. I know I'm pausing a lot and going it back, but if you see the reason why these ships were so vulnerable and so, and it was so devastating, one bomb managed to do this much damage is because, as we can see here. <laughs> the fuel lines and all of the aircraft and all of the ordnance were below decks at the time because they were rearming and refueling their strike packages from midway as well as the reinforcement wave for their attack on the american carriers that was coming up so this actual death of the ship is accurate Whoa! and that's a scene lifted straight out of midway wade would rather have been called a hot shot than a hero that was his contradiction. He is one of the war's greatest pilots, but he needed a team. The problem was getting him to admit it. All right. So I'll just pan back to that final shot there. Okay, so it looks like we have... They look a bit strange from here, because, like, the tower design on, on them is... 
obviously it is very obviously a Yorktown class. Yet the decks look very Lexington class and the Aurelicons are late war refit Yorktown. So I'm assuming this is supposed to be I was assuming that's supposed to be Enterprise and that's Yorktown or Hornet. Yeah. Alright. So that's it guys. Um Yeah, look, I was nitpicking a lot. It looks like it's a lot of fun, but let this be a lesson to you, Call of Duty Vanguard, along with your bullshit M1 Garands with drum mags and still pinging, despite the fact that the ping is being caused by the clip leaving the firing mechanism, and as such, if you've replaced that mechanism with a drum magazine, you're not going to have the ping and the red dot sign. Look, guys, make a historical Call of Duty. I know you made Call of Duty World War II. That was pretty good. I liked the campaign on that one. It was fun. If you're going to do historical, just be historical. And Battlefield, that goes for you too. All right? Anyway, this was just a fun little video I thought I'd put together for you guys. Thanks for watching. You have a great day.